Oh, exciting times. I know no one likes to talk more about the U.S. men's national team and the preparation for the World Cup than me and you. And all, you know, we all love it. This is what gets clicks people want to talk about. By the way, I'm sorry. I may have overserved myself a little bit on sun all day at the beach Saturday and Sunday. Kind of working, uh, exercising. And then a Beach Life Festival in Redondo Beach, which is where I live. Rode the electric bike down there. Electric bikes are great. The only problem with electric bikes is uh, everyone's bike is getting stolen. So <laughs> terrified to leave the house with it. But they had a, a beach valet. So I just popped it right in there. Saw Cheryl Crow smashing pumpkins. Who else? Lord Huron. That was very good. Uh, Joe Russo almost dead. And you had the deadhead crowd. It was very, it was, it was, it was an entertaining show. I mean, some of the guys, <laughs> some, some of these some of these guys here have just got it all figured out. Look at them having a, having a blast. They've got it all figured out. They've got this life thing figured out. Happy as clams there. A guy looks like Jerry Garcia slash Santa. So, um, but that's what, uh, that's why. It looks good. Get your vitamin D. Exercise, jumping in the cold water in the Pacific, I highly recommend. Sauna, if you're looking to do some things to kind of get, I, I have some clarity, so... I'm very happy about that. But we're going to talk about the U.S. Men's National Team, June camp. Here it is. We have a camp in June. We have a camp in September. Then it's World Cup time. We're going to be talking about it here on the Soccer OG. Check out the uh, Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. I'll be joined by Melissa Ortiz. Works for Fubo. Covered South American football. We'll talk about the South American game. We'll talk about a Latina in this business. Trying to get a hold, just like everybody else. Very interesting story to tell. I'm excited to chat with her. Does a great job. Good follow on social media as well. And we'll also talk a little bit about this creation of this roster, which will be coming out very soon. Please like and subscribe as well. So let's talk about this roster. And some people are saying, blow it all up. Some people are saying, make a change here, 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 here. Some people are going, don't touch anything. I'm kind of the latter, and I'm being realistic here. So we have concerns, goalkeeping. Our top three guys are not starting, although Matt Turner's back and playing for the New England Revolution. No one's scoring goals at striker. <laughs> no one. I think that's the position where there could be some, some competition, some competition in that competition, and some, some really strong looks at some alternatives. Uh, everything else, I think what you see is what you... Get. Now, injuries are something you can't control. And there's some big ones. Gio Reyna, we hope he gets back. But tread lightly there. Weston McKinney should be back. Uh, and hopefully he stays upright. Christian Pulisic has avoided the injuries. Chris Richards. You know, there's some key guys that are going to just sit out the rest of the season. And Chris Richards is a very interesting one. Because it will get us to talking about um, who will fill up. For Miles Robinson, who is the latest injury, we know he's probably not going to bait the World Cup. Can't say he won't, but it's just not realistic when you rupture your Achilles. We know they need to get another center back because it was Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman. We kind of plugged those two in there and we were good. The alternative was Chris Richards. If Chris Richards is healthy, he plugs in there. Now, everyone wants to see John Brooks. John Brooks just wrapping up his season, running out his contract. But he, he had a really good season. Um, but you wouldn't be running out of your contract if the season was all that great. They, clearly, these, this is a relationship they wanted to go. The best years are behind John Brooks by a lot, a lot. And to me, he doesn't quite fit this team. Now, if he gets called in, I'll be great. And trust me, we'd all feel relieved knowing that you have this veteran player. But let me tell you what this U.S. team is doing. And it's kind of what everyone was asking for. Play the kids. Play the kids. Over the last nine months... Back to September of 2021 when qualifying started, you had the old guard of Zardes and, um, who am I thinking of? Sebastian Legette. Uh, the, the guys, you know, we, we all take Jackson Yule, these guys that kind of helped fill the gaps so that these kids could come along. Well, over six, seven months, the kids came along. And by the end of it in March, we have the youngest team at the World Cup. That's by design. They want a young team. The U.S. wants a young team. If they wanted a little bit more veteran pop, you would see it. So when we talk about a guy like Stefan Fry, who's 37 and never been called in, it's not happening. It's not happening. The three same goalkeepers and maybe Sean Johnson 
are going to compete for those spots. And I think the pecking order probably doesn't change. It's still Stefan, Turner. Now, you don't just pull the rug on Stefan. I, I, I don't think Stefan's our best keeper. I really don't. I don't feel safe there. But if you've been with him for this process over six, seven months, you don't just pull the rug. You've put that time in for a reason. None of these guys, almost none of these guys, went through a World Cup qualifying process, but now they have, and they've done that together. This is a bonding ex exercise. So now these guys that went through together, do they think you want to look over the corner and some guy walks in and go, hey, I'm here for the World Cup. They'll be like, what? We went through, we went through this. We were in the trenches together. What's he doing here? That's how it works. But the U.S. team has this squad and they brought people along at, close, at the right time or close to the right time to create the squad that by and large will be in Qatar. I think 18 of 20 spots are locked in and you're looking at three to six, depending how big the U.S. roster wants to be, to fill out the gaps. There are needs. It's not going to be Stephen Fry. And it's probably not going to be John Brooks. That relationship is broken. I wish Burhalter was a little bit more honest, but there's something there and it would be weird to bring him in now, right? Look, there are, we all deal with this in our lives where our boss or the person overseeing us just says, no, nah. it's happened to me many times in my TV career. Trust me, it hurts, but what can you do? Some guys make it and some guys don't. Some people like some guys and some, they're like not the right fit. I was supposed to work two World Cups for ESPN. I worked zero because the boss there was like, mm-mm. So, got to keep plugging away. Got to keep plugging away. And John Brooks will do that and hopefully has a really nice next step in his career. But I just don't think it's going to happen here. Look, this is going to be heartbreaking for so many guys. that aren't going to make the World Cup. So these are the ones that people want to see. Those two, I think we can rule out. I would like to see John Brooks in there because of the Miles Robinson injury. I think the pecking order is, is pretty straightforward. It'll be Zimmerman, Richards. He's the key, man. I really believe Chris Richards is the key because of the Miles Robinson injury of everything we want to happen here. Gio Reyna, having him back from injury would be great. I'm just not, because of the history, I'm just not, I'm not going to rely on that. Chris Richards is the guy who's got to get healthy. He would start. Aaron Long, to me, is now number three on the pecking order. He's going to be in that group. Mark McKenzie, he's been called in enough. They're not going to jettison him here to bring in John Brooks because they would have done that already. And then we'll see what happens with the rest. But guys like Brooks and Miazga, they're there. It's not happening. Tim Ream, not happening. Damn the brakes. It's a nasty business, how the sausages are made when you're preparing for a World Cup. Too. Dreams will be crushed. Hopes will be crushed. I can't even imagine working that hard to play in a World Cup and being told you're not going if you're like one of the two last players. Ooh. An experience of a lifetime. So let's look a little closer at what we need to see. Now, we need a starting center forward. And I think there's been enough good developments to show that Despite the fact Ricardo Pepe's not scoring, uh, despite the fact Jordan Pifok looks out of place, um, that Jossi Zardes is now off the back wheel, there are some nice, there are some nice developments. Jesus Ferreira at the top of the list. I think he should start. And by the way, this is the schedule. The U.S. will play Morocco June the 1st in Cincinnati. They'll play Uruguay June the 5th in Kansas City. I know we all want to see a little more diversity in the the venues that the U.S. use. Then they have the CONCACAF Nations League group stages, Grenada, June 10th, El Salvador, June 14th. There's going to be a squad, an initial squad. Some guys will leave, start their vacation. Some new players will come in for the Nations League. The guys who play in the Nations League are getting a look, unlikely to probably break into the main World Cup roster. But it's going to be, it's going to be big. It's quite an operation that this U.S. team and so many other countries around the world are going for in June, another camp in September. So you can't make seismic changes. It's just not good. No national team anywhere would just make seismic changes and just say, but this guy's starting. This guy's starting. You're out. Thanks for helping us qualify. It doesn't happen. This doesn't, doesn't. So, uh, but there will be some in and outs. I think uh, Stefan's still your keeper and Matt Turner backs him up and probably Horvath is your number three. I'd like to see Gaga Slonina, who will get called in and maybe there is a chance for him to move up the pecking order a little bit. As we look at, the, I, I, let's jump back to the forwards. 
Ferreira should start against Morocco. Probably come off the bench against Uruguay. We've seen the Uruguayan roster. It's loaded. Morocco, to me, arguably the best African team that plays like a European team. Um, when you're in a World Cup, you want to mimic the teams in your group. So uh, the United States has two European teams and a team from Asia. And they're playing a team from Africa and South America. I would, I would say at the end of the day, you still want good competition. And they got two great games because Morocco is going to be dynamite at the World Cup and Uruguay is Uruguay. Um, so I think Ricardo Pepe, uh, pardon me, I think Jesus Fedeta starts the first game and he should be the guy on the inside track for that position. He's having an MVP season in FC Dallas. I know some people will go, no more MLS players. Well, just don't be ridiculous. The MLS players are the ones that are performing. So those are the ones that are getting in there. Haji writes another one. And it sound, from what I understand, Greg Berhalter has said that he's going to be called in. So he's scoring a lot of goals in Turkey. Deserves a look. And the number nine is something where you can plug in a guy. And because of the situation, I think the rest of the squad will say, okay, we, we're flexible on this one. Who you got? So Ferreira, Haji Wright, he's not a number nine. But Georgi Mihalovic is the number one guy on my list to be called in for a guy who hasn't been. It would be criminal if he doesn't. He does so many good things. He has been phenomenal for Montreal, uh, Club Foot Montreal, who was supposed to be one of the bad teams in MLS, and they look like an MLS Cup contender, and it's because of Mihalovic, who, de who just delivers in every game. He's number one on my list to, to make it. Haji Wright is number two. Um, Jeremy Abobasi, I would really like. I think it's a long shot. But he has all the makings of a guy who can score goals. I really, I would hope that he gets a look, certainly in the uh, Nation League's games. Should be good. Um, Brandon Vasquez, still demanding to get a look at, maybe, but a little bit down the pecking order. We mentioned Jesus Ferreira. What about Paul Ariola is already part. Paul Ariola is going to the World Cup. And he's playing really well for FC Dallas. So this is a no-brainer. Pax and Palmico. FC Dallas are having a great season. So why not Pommy Call in there? I know you're thinking, well, that's like 20 MLS players. I'm just saying, there's too many injuries and there's too many concerns for the European-based players to shun what's happening in Major League Soccer. Because these are really breakthrough performances. Uh, Ferreira, Mihalovic, uh, Pommy Call, Vasquez. Um, where do we go next? <laughs> <laughs> we need some depth at the fullback position. We have Anthony Robinson at the left back, but who backs him up? That's been a real problem. Um, George Bellows got off and he's kind of come in a bit. Uh, Joe Scally. Uh, I'd like to see Joe Scally. Oh, by the way, speaking of Americans in Germany, um, Marcus Weinzierl of Augsburg, that was really lame. Really lame what you did this weekend. It was a game with no consequences and didn't play Pepe at all. This is a teenager that needs some confidence, and you just buried him at the end. He should have started that game. I know he's not performing, but these are the facts. And now Weinzel is no longer with the club because apparently he had an issue with the sporting director, is that this is your record signing, so he's your guy. So you find a way to play him, especially in games where there was relatively meaningless. That really bothered me. Bothered me. So uh, Pepe's still in play here to start, not only make the roster, but to start. And now I'll have a full preseason, and he'll go in there. Let's get back to the fullbacks. I am sorry I'm popping all around. I think Joe Scally has a shot. It's a long one, but he has a shot because they need some depth at that left back spot. Uh, Brian Reynolds might be coming into view again as a right back. Uh, Supposedly he's getting to French football. We'll see if that uh, materializes. And... Guys like Ledesma, Mendez, who have developed. I mean, how'd you write? Is, I mean, we're going to get a look at some of these guys, but it's going to be minimal alterations, and that's the way it should be. Because you owe it to those players that qualified you for the World Cup, even though they did it by the skin of their teeth. You owe it to them. I don't want to say another MLS player, but I'm going to. <laughs> Cade Cal, because Mexico wants him. You've got to find a way to make this look interesting. And... <laughs> And you rock and roll, man. Um, the midfield is good. I mean, I, I love our midfield. McKenney, Musa, Reyna. I mean, uh, 
Adams hasn't played a lot, but he's still our guy. He's one of our leaders. Kellen Acosta, Luca De La Torre, and then that sixth guy could be Gianluca Busio, although he's kind of fizzled down the stretch here. The wingers are amazing. When you look at a guy like Pulisic, who could play a little more centrally, I hope. Uh, Brennan Aronson, Tim Weah, who had a goal and assist over the weekend. That is a good development. It's been going much better for the U.S. players overseas than it has been over the last month. So a good week. And then I think it's good. Build on 2022 and figure it out for 2026. Who are the young players that really are going to come through? And there's going to be a lot of new players in that next cycle that are going to put their hands up. I wonder if we can naturalize a couple guys. Valentin Castellanos. So uh, the U.S. roster might come out before you hear this. Hopefully you see this first and we'll see if it all matches up. I don't want to go into player to player. We'll be back here on the OG to break down that roster. But I just wanted to give you an overview about what I think Greg Berhalter and the U.S. team should do in what is a very valuable three weeks, two weeks, three weeks uh, with this team to get them focused. And it's so late in the game, you tell them, this is your team. This is your team. Like Norman Dale said to the folks in Hickory, this is your team. Then they got Jimmy Chitwood back and they, they won the Indiana High School Championship. It all ended well. Check out the Soccer OG Podcast World Podcasts are available. Like and subscribe here. Leave a comment. I love to interact with you guys. And uh, let's talk a lot this